Um, to be honest, I, I look, I love the game, um, but when you see the skills of guys like Yao Yi, um, Israel Folau, like you know, you just, you know, you just, it's time to go. Like, so, but I, I just love the fact that I got that opportunity to see um, not just that game. Um, it just means so much to a lot of people. And growing up as a young Indigenous man, uh, boy, um, just to finish on that sort of stage against those sort of players that stand out there, and just the kids all week. Origin's a bit different because um, you have to do sponsorship and the corporate stuff. But all week it's been community and training and those young guys have been marvellous. So, you know, hats off to the government and the NRL, especially the fans, because I think they got it right. Well, it'll have to be then, you know, the last, you know, the very first Indigenous game and you saw the first try, you know, when you saw the kick coming through, did you think, here we go? Oh, all I kept thinking was, please don't stuff this up. Because I saw Big Manu jam in and uh, Scotty Prince talked about it. And, um, you know, I'm a big guy and it's hard to, it's hard to turn and Manu's the same. You got down low there. I did get down low, probably the last I've ever gotten down. <laughs> Obviously, the, the plan though was to go for the corn post after. Well, the funny thing was, I wasn't smart enough to think about that. Uh, Jonathan Thurston said to me 15 minutes before the game, he goes, he goes, Dell, he goes, mate, if, if you get a chance, he goes, how about picking up the corner post and playing like didgeridoo? And I walked away and then I went, yeah, rightio. So, <laughs> I didn't know if I'd score, so if I score, I'll do it. So, and the boys got involved and worked out well. Hopefully that's my highlights. Through the year. <laughs> <laughs> on that subject, it's, it's television now for. for oh, look, uh, you know, once again, it's not about me, but I've been very lucky. The game's given me so much, but, you know, the NRL, Channel 9, um, Fox, um, so I've spread myself out a little bit. Um, I've got my finger in some pies. I won't be eating too many, hopefully not. Hey, anyway. Yeah, so. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that worked out well. And Neil was tremendous all week, but I've got to give a massive rap to Greg Bird, too. Um, he came into the team, and he was tremendous. Um, you know, we all like second chances in life, but Greg Bird has been outstanding. And it's funny when you get a perception of someone. Um, he, he played great, and he was awesome all week with the young guys, and, uh, and you know, even myself. Did, so was. even you had a bit of a perception of Greg Bird, Del? If you read papers and you don't really know the guy, I suppose, you know, when Greg Bird sort of came on the scene, I, I was in rugby union, and then I went on my two-year holiday. But yeah, over the last year or year and a half, you know, and stuff he's done in the field, um, it's just like any, everyone deserves a second chance. And I just think, hopefully, everyone realises that. You know, he's probably done his time, but he was great with the kids, great with the boys, and just, you know, yeah, it's funny. It's, you, just, you just can't think negative of someone. What was it about the bloke that impressed you? It's just his attitude, he's a winner. Like, he wants to win, um, but just more importantly, he's just a decent guy, you know. It's like, it's funny how he can be misunderstood sometimes, but uh, he was great with the young blokes, and, you know, even myself. And I, I told him what I thought at the start of the week, um, you know, and it was fine, and we were just, and from there... I think we we're training partners, and you know, and that's the way it is. And uh, you know, it's going to be good to watch this year. I think the Titans have done well. You, you were ex- accepted back pretty well. Do you think is, is it going to be tougher for him? Do you think? Oh, look, I, I think if you do the work in the community, but I think everyone knows that. Like, I was a pretty decent guy that made a stupid mistake. I carried on like a like a rock star and paid a heavy penalty. Um, but I did a lot of work behind the scenes, um, out of the cameras, and I think you know, Greg, he'll be that sort of person too. And I just think rugby league is the most forgiving game, and it's why I think. Everyone loves it. It's a working class game. Well, the, I don't think I'll be saying this sort of word, but defence was just remarkable. Everyone's talking about, you know, even Presto was saying yesterday that you know there won't be much tackling. The big but it was phenomenal from your team. It Both teams were good, but I think with Indigenous boys uh, in general, um, and it's it's fair enough. Everyone said uh, you know they like the flair, they like the scoring tries, and mm-hmm. running late to feel like Jamie Sow did. Yeah, but and I'll be honest, I was surprised too because I knew our forwards were good, but they were aiming up hard on guys like Sam Burgess and Anthony Watme on that. Um, and it was a great, I think, you know, positive for our team that it was just attitude because we didn't work too much on defence, no, did we, Neil? No, not much he wouldn't want to play that game. I think you're kidding. He was sitting there and we were going and he was just going, oh, just, I'd love to be out there. So it means something like Matty Bowen, you know, Justin Hodges, all those guys coming into camp, you know, they've all been great Indigenous players over the last five, ten years. And um, I think that next year they're just going to rip in again. They just, you know, GI was just thinking, he was just going, oh, I'd love to be out there, bro. And I said, mate, you'll get your chance next year. So, you know. Yeah. yeah, I'll, I'll be on the coaching staff one, O'Neill. You really? Okay, good. Yeah. When you say at what a time there were a few beats, and was, that wasn't a reference to putting a big shot on your club mate, was it? Because that's obviously what Corey Patterson. Do you hope that you know the bigger picture is more important than the individual interests? Of- oh, yeah, I look, I do. I think you know I've been involved in a few programs, but I just think rugby league means so much to not just the community, but the Indigenous community especially. And I think we're representing out there not only for the football, but also education, and for them to to think that we can achieve. And I think growing up as a young Indigenous kid. All you ever thought about was athletic ability. So hopefully now the kids can see us and, you know, the NRL do a good job and I think the players do a good job with education um, and talking to kids about, you know, confidence and that sort of stuff. So, and mentoring, it's uh, it's big. Um, we're still doing a lot of work on it. So 
And I just think that's a great spectacle to start the season because this season is going to be a cracker. Even Big Sam Burgess, <laughs> I'm not running to him too much this year. That'll be it. He's a massive man. Preston, one stage. Man, what, what does he mean in particular to the Indigenous community? Like we hear, we say he's a great ambassador all the time. But... Well, look, I think you know, I think he's won a Dalian medal. Um, you know, or a Clyde Church or something. I know he's won something. He's played some pretty good footy, and I just think um, he always opens himself up to the community. And I think what I like about him most was in about 2002, he talked about his depression, and some kids now don't like to talk about it. Preston put himself right out there, but I got to present um, the flag to him before he got on the bus. And for me, you know, I play with a lot of great Indigenous players and players in general, but Preston Campbell, I just think if you're looking for an ambassador for any sort of game, he's your man. And uh, I was quite honoured to play with him. You know, Thurston was great to play with him. I uh, would love to play with Inglis. But Preston Campbell, you can't be that small and be that courageous, you know. He's got a heart like Farlap, and uh, and I just thanked him for the opportunity to play this last game. And, uh, you know, so, yeah, it's unbelievable. Will, will Preston go down in the same breath as one day as guys like Artie Beetson and, and Lionel Morgan and those kind of guys? I, I think in our community he will, but I just don't, I think the overall picture is people just think he's one of those players that missed out. But... When you're playing NRL and you're playing Preston Campbell, you do your homework on the guy, but you just love everything he's about. You know, he just speaks from the heart. And it's a good lesson for any young player out there that's coming through, is if you want to be a good ambassador and a good player, he's the bloke. I just saw him stretching and doing the extras and he's 33 and I asked him, I said, how old are you? And he said, oh, 33. And he's got like two or three years in him yet. He's a bit like um, John Ferguson and that. Keeps going. Cliffy Lyons. But even our support staff was great. Cliffy Lyons was great. Ron, yeah, Ron Gibbs is... I'm just not sure how a guy like Ron Gibbs doesn't get a job um, with the NRL on that. He does so much good work. So, you know, for me, it was an honour of those guys, Tony Carey, Tony Carey to be in the, in the squad. Yep. And even Neil. I'm not sure what tribe you're from, Neil. What tribe you're from? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> T.I. Oh, yeah, T- Tasmanian Isle? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Tasmanian. <laughs>